Hello everyone and welcome to this afternoon's session where David and I will be looking at uh, what's happening in the markets and in particular with particular reference to stocks and indices although I think David's got you got some commodities as well haven't yeah. you today yep um, but before we start as usual can I just draw your attention to the disclaimer that I know you can see on your screen. As you know, trading can be a very, very risky business. So please, please don't ever think of using money that you cannot afford to lose. I've had a quick look on, um, see who is with us today. And let's have a look. Exit full screen. Yes, that's it. There we are. Very, very quickly. Sorry about that. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Right. Uh, before we start, just for the benefit of those of you who I know are probably here for the first time, um, how we are going to look at the charts that uh, we will pull up is through the prism of what we call volume price analysis. Um, it's a methodology that David and I have been using for many, many years. Um, the concepts that make up the methodology can be found in this book, A Complete Guide to Volume Price Analysis. There's a whole load of books on Amazon. Um, uh, this is the general one, if you like, that's applicable. You can apply the methodology to all markets, but there's also a specialist ones for um, cryptos. There's one for binary options, and there's also one for Forex. They all take, as I said, the principles, but with the other ones, they we go into those particular markets in a little bit more detail. Not the concept doesn't change. Um, it's just uh, it's it's placed within that the uh, the uh, the um, uh, that particular market. But the, the the basic book is a complete guide to volume price analysis, as I said, and it is on Amazon. And the companion book that goes with it is it's that's offered in this two box set, which is a digital box set, by the way. It's examples because the, the, the wonderful thing about a VPA is that the um, the signals that it gives, the the setups that it gives, call it you know the patterns that that are that are revealed to you on your charts, they repeat. So once you get to know them, you will recognize them, and we will show some of them on the on the charts that we uh, that we're going to pull up today. And I'm David. I'm absolutely delighted on the on, on my Twitter feed. I have lots of people who post up their uh, you know what their um, uh, what their trades are, and uh, it's really lovely to see the the, uh, the concepts and the lessons that they have they've taken from the books and how they apply them to their own uh, trading as i said and investing and you know that is the beauty of it once you recognize as i said these patterns we use candlesticks although you, know, you can use uh, um, um, uh, was it bars what do you call them david not range bars what are the other ones called um <laughs> bars yeah price bars that's it uh, but as i said candlesticks for us are are they they give you a lot of a lot more information we believe anyway but whatever it is the uh, the companion book is there now the question i was asked is that a lot of the examples on there are on the slower time frames and someone emailed me and said well you know does that apply to the the faster time frames absolutely because as i said this morning in the in the forex webinar the um the price cycle which is what we're actually talking about here the price cycle being you know is is what you're looking at is it in trend is it in congestion what kind of trend is it is it a volatile trend is it a smooth trend uh and you know are we looking at a pullback that's in a trend uh, you know uh, if you what kind of congestion phase are you in are you in a, a volatile congestion phase with lots of very very choppy price action or is it sort of fairly you know measured congestion phase with a big range that allows you to, to trade within that range you know so you, you know what your uh, you, you know what the, the upside is you know what the da what the downside is and you kind of trade within it as it were that that is exactly the same on all the time frames the only difference is obviously on a daily chart um, it's going to take a lot longer to develop and evolve um, as I said these are the, the five elements that make up the uh, the methodology there's volume and the price obviously candles candle patterns and the support and resistance zones areas we uh, mark these areas on the chart with with price based ones and also with volume based uh, based ones we've actually developed some specific indicators to help us with that but you don't have to use them you can use um, the strategy indicators that are available with your platform. Some people use EMA, some people use Fibonacci, um, if you use GAN, it, you know, it really is pretty much up to you. And on overlay, 
uh, overarching everything is obviously time and, and by that and by time I mean the actual chart that you're trading and also these multiple time frames I can't stress enough about multiple time frames um, I get a lot of questions uh, emails uh, messages on Twitter messages on Facebook oh could you have a look at this chart what am I seeing you know you know what is this is my interpretation correct and it's always I would say 90% of the time it is always on one time frame and if that's you know I'm I know we all start with one time frame but you really really have to look at that that time whatever you're seeing in one chart is in the context of another time frame and sometimes what you're seeing on your chart you could be counter trend trading or you could be going with the trend in a slower time frame if you go and go with the trend in a slower time frame then you are probably the risk on that trade is probably slightly less but, um, but on, a, on an even slower time frame, you may be counter trend trading. It really ha is the distance that you are to the, to the dominant trend. If you're very, very close to it and you're counter trend trading, then the chances are that, you know, is a little bit more risk. If it's, if it's your, so for example, if you're on a daily, but, you know, it's counter to what's going on the monthly, well, the range that you're going to get as a correction on the daily is probably tradable. It, it's, it's very, very... It's it, there's no hard and fast rules, and that brings me to another question that I was asked on 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 Twitter. Who's someone who's read the book, and we're happy with the concepts, agrees with the concepts, can see the the benefit of of the of using VPA, but he wants the perfect entry. Well, there there's nothing. There is no perfect in trading. You know, if you are looking for perfect. Uh, before you 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 enter, then um, possibly you have to revisit your um, your approach. I'm not saying you know you you're never going to be able to trade, but you're going to find it um, a bit of a struggle because what you have to recognise in trading that trading is actually quite discretionary trading. Here I'm talking about is actually quite messy in the sense that um, there are so many. Uh, factors that could possibly uh, upend or, or or completely take apart your you know your your set of conditions if you like that you put together for a particular entry and possibly if you have difficulty with uh, uh, discretionary trading perhaps look at some kind of assist, assist systematic trading where you have very very fixed rules i mean quants do that they have very strict rules but you then have to obey them now with vpa vpa is a system in the sense that it has these elements that you put together but you apply it in a discretionary way so i hope that answers that right to get back to the uh, markets and what has been happening well Oh dear! It looks like uh, the the uh, the uh, Dow's down. The uh, S and P is well. It was a it was up. It's gone down again. Um, the Russell, which is the one we really want to see, because this is the speculators' uh, um, index. Uh, that's um, well, it's not looking terribly healthy. And what about the Nasdaq? Oh, the Nasdaq's looking a little bit more positive. So a bit of a mixed picture, but generally speaking. You know, as we've said all along, markets, uh, we've been saying, those of you who come along regularly, we, we sounded like records stuck in a groove. We were saying these markets are very, are very, very fragile. And you can see that if you look, you know, the, the, the up days, the rallies are not strong. So the market is clearly, market sentiment is clearly, you know, um, on a scale of one to ten, it's probably um, you know to the negative rather than the positive. And, and sentiment is really, it's a question of which way the wind is blowing, um, and you know, and what is causing the wind to blow in that direction. And at the moment, I would say uh, there are so many things out there, but possibly, uh, you know, inf you'll see it in headlines is inflation. Now, we know inflation um, has been, we know there is inflation. Uh, up until now, it's not the inflation that um, the central banks consider to be important in their decision making, although I'm not sure that is not going to change fairly soon. And this week, 
certainly end of week, uh, end of month, beginning of the new month, we have an absolute deluge of fundamental news coming. Uh, it's going to be inflation based. We've got the PMIs. And today we have over in uh, for America, we've got the PCE. And this is the metric that the Fed uses. This is the final number. It's, um, the, the one you want is the um, is not the quarter on quarter. It's the it's the it's the one that's more recent. You can see it's not considered hugely impactful because on this particular calendar you haven't got it highlighted bold on the uh, uh, on the uh, on the timestamp here. But still, 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 PCE prices look. You know, this is the forecast. They've come in at 6.5. And don't forget, this is what the Fed consider to be, you know, the, the, their their important metric. Uh, you've got the, the different PMIs. You had the PPI. You had the uh, producer uh, index um, uh, a week or so ago. So everything is screaming in, in you know, inflation. What that is going to mean? What does that? How does that affect? Um, the, the markets and if you are looking at, to trade the markets, how can you use that to your advantage? And first of all, you've got to you've got to you've got to understand that this is what's going on in the background. This is what the market is concerned with. And when we this, first of all, there's, there's three types of inflation, just in case you don't. There's inflation where things just, prices go up and up and up. You've got deflation and you've also got stagflation. And you will hear uh, all sorts of commentators, you know, say that, well, yes, it's inflationary at the moment, but we're actually going to get stagflation next year. That's when you have inflation, but you don't have any growth. And deflation, you know, is when obviously prices uh, go the other way. But looking at the here and now, how does that impact the stock market but well, a little bit of inflation is actually quite positive for the stock market because it tells it tells investors that um, you know the economy is kind of picking up things are, are on the move as as it were but it's when it gets out of control and this is the I think this is a situation we are at the moment, David, isn't it? Is is it getting to that tipping point when it gets under control? And the Fed, you know, dear old Fed, um, basically it's a question of are they they will do the right thing, but they tend to do the right thing at the wrong time. So if you have a situation where you have rampant inflation, and we can see you and I can see this in our in our daily lives, and we've said this before, and now you've got energy inflation coming in with the oil price going up and we have all sorts of problems over here in in the UK, not just in the UK, it's it's going to be a, a global issue. Um, and you have uh, um, no growth and you then it raise interest rates and you've got no, then you're going to kill off any uh, any prospect of any recovery which tells us that essentially we are heading for some pretty difficult times. Now, if you are a trader and you are simply, um, take that away. sorry about that, hold on a minute. There we are. Apologies about that. As a trader, um, as I said this morning, not that you don't care, of course you care from a personal perspective. But as a trader, you just want to trade what you see on the charts. And if you recall, you know, coming into the summit, when the markets were creeping up, creeping up and ranges were very narrow, it was, you know, they were reaching all time highs from a trading perspective. That's really quite tough because you don't, there's not much range in the day. Whereas in the last sort of week or so, David, to since the 20th of September, when we said in our, was our last webinar, we said that, or the one before, Yes, I would, they, the question was when it was keeling over, and I and I said to tell told David to tell everyone it was the 20th of September, and that was that the day that the market swooned because of problems in China. Um, and since then, you've seen it. We've seen it over on. Uh, let's have a quick look on investing.com. We can see here. Let's have a look at the chart. Let's have a look at the Nasdaq because I've got the chart out for the Nasdaq. Yes, um, you know when you're going up. 
this is it wasn't quite so bad on the Nasdaq because you had some really nice up days. Then you have really two horrible days, a bit of a down day, and, I, and then another, and then you get these kinds of candles on the day before it sort of rolls over. It's it's you know it's not easy. I'm not saying it's easy now because now you've got momentum, you've got um, you've got volatility, you've got um, you know you've got a lot of um, instability in the market but still as a trader this is what you want you want a bit of a roller coaster you want to be able to you know you want to see a nice nice trend higher or a nice trend lower for investors it's really really tough um, it's, it's it's very very anxious times. Um, we don't we don't uh, believe this is the one. This is the one where you know you're going to get a, a serious serious co correction. But it is unstable, and we don't think it's going to get. Um, it's going to be it's not going to be very pretty uh, in the next sort of coming weeks and months, and certainly by 2022, as I said. But that's that's a different conversation. That's a different um, issue. Now. We know if the market is concerned about inflation, what happens to stocks in an inflationary environment? Which ones do better? Which ones do best? And the ones that sometimes, um, even if the market is not speaking or not, you know, referring to it, it's kind of inflation is a bit in the background. The market may speak sooner in the sense that money will already be going into those sectors which are a kind of hedge against inflation, and the one. And I think we've already picked it up already. And when we looked at our our um, Finviz filter, energy was absolutely screaming and said, "Oh my goodness, there's there's you know they were suddenly these stocks were suddenly taking off. They'd been in consolidation, they'd been on a downward trajectory, and now suddenly we could see they were, um, those of you who have come regularly, you know, energy they just they kept screaming." But people have been moving into energy since July, August. Now everyone's talking about inflation. But, you know, the smart, let's call it not smart money, but people who have, who pay more attention to perhaps sentiment and maybe look slightly longer term could see what's coming down the track. But you can do that as well. You can look, you can kind of use the, the filtering systems that are available on uh, um, um, sites such as Finviz to your advantage because possibly you can you you can start to see well you know there's a lot of money going into this particular sector but it's not being talked about it's it's kind of in the background and that's what you want that's what you don't want to be um, in a way getting into something which is at the top lots of traders do it, it's it, you just have to think you have to be a little bit contrarian a little bit you know watching what's happening by using the filter system so the filter system not only helps you find potential candidates that you might consider to trade but also have a have a quick look i mean the, the metric of the the filter um, uh, fil the filters I put for the stocks to look for on Finviz. I'm using a very, very simple filter. I'm using anything that has an average volume over a million and anything that has a relative volume of over 1.5. Now you can you can amend that by by playing around with these numbers. You will either get m more or fewer. Uh, a fewer selection of stocks, but I think to actually cope with the sheer volume of uh, information that you get is, I think it's more than enough for when you for when you start. Now, the other advantage of this is obviously we've got 15 odd pages of this, and what it then does, if you just quickly go through, you can see of the uh, of the ones that have been pulled up, which um, which sector seems to be um, you know, throwing up more candidates, if you like, and you look at consumer uh, uh, defensives. I mean, by the way, I've got any exchange here, so but you can filter it even more. You can take out, um, you can just focus on Amex or uh, NASDAQ and NYSE. I just put any in because um, otherwise it means I've got to do lots of filters, as it were. Right. And then, as I said, let's go to energy energy at the moment it's almost as if 
you know that there's been a lot of um, there's been a lot of uh, uh, volume going in, and then you look down at the volume numbers as well, and there are some massive massive numbers going into these uh, into these stocks. In fact, CA, CEI is a stock that I picked out at the beginning of this week. Uh, this changes every day, obviously, but you know you look at the numbers, and but it's another way of just trying to pick out. Um, you know what's happening in real estate at the moment? Well, you know, not a lot. If if um, if inf you know the the Fed is saying uh, they are going to raise interest rates, well, that's not very good for uh, for mortgages, um, as it were. Inflation is quite good for um, sort of commercial um, real estates in the sense that if people have got to pay uh, pay rent, you know, the for for premises. Everything like that feeds into the uh, inflation narrative and you've got to kind of try and find what it is that's going to benefit from uh, an uptick in inflation and possibly an, uh, an increase in the uh, rate, the interest, uh, interest rates. So that's how you can use this as well. Uh, let's see what tech's doing at the moment, or tech we've got to. It's all fairly sort of um, evenly balanced at, at the moment, but you can go and look at AMD. And as I said, what I wanted to really look at this, uh, today was um, we've looked at this before, and the, my ideal stock would be a stock that has been in a consolidation phase and it's ready to break out. And it's, you know, there's, there's a lot of volume going in, but it hasn't got there yet, ideally. But you, we can't always get that. This is this is one such example. Uh, this is now in a consolidation. I, I don't even know, but it, you can look back at the chart and you can see it's had a big breakout. It's down at 14, but when it was down at sort of two in the twos, poss possibly there was a big injection and then whoosh, up it went, and you know, uh, it looks like there was a, uh, looks like a bit of pump and dump there, and then down it's gone down again. But it's back in consolidation, so possibly, although it's had one attempt to you know sucking in a lot of people and then spitting them out, um, the chances are it could do it again. So maybe this is one you could put on a watch list. Just keep an eye on it. It's had seven million go in. You know, you would we would do all our other research that we do on Market Beat. And I've got a couple of other things I want to show you with Market Beat. You just simply flick through here. And the other thing you have to decide is I, I um um, obviously, as a trader, you want to trade both sides of uh, of the market, and you know you want to take a, a short position. How you do that, whether you do it through um, through the options market or whether you do it directly on your platform, that is pretty much up to you. And what I wanted to um, highlight to you is one way that you could do that, because you have to remember when a stock starts to move up dramatically and you get these explosive price moves what it in in triggers in a lot of traders is fomo because if we think first of all everyone says oh i've missed that how could i have missed that and it keeps you know it seems to be going up and up and up and the, the most traders would jump in at the wrong time most investors jump in at the wrong time and then suddenly it reverses but with VPA and with a particular indicator that we have, which is our volatility indicator, you can avoid that. You can avoid that and you could you could look at it at possibly fading uh, that particular move, but you have to be a little bit patient. So you could just go down, down you go. I mean, that is probably a, a, a prime example of that. This is this is what I saw as well, that's. You can see it, it's almost vertical, reasonable amount of volume, but look at that last up bar before the uh, before the bar with the big uh, wick on the top there. You can see it's a big bar. This looks like some volume. There is reasonable amount of volume, but not a huge amount. It's a bit of a, an anomaly, and then you get the candle. But I can assure you there'll be traders who've seen that. I want to get in. I want to get in. I'm not, oh, I'm going to get in now. And suddenly, yes, it does shoot up. It goes up to eighteen uh, $18. And bang, what happens? It goes all the way down. And now it's stuck. That is a, there is a volatility candle on there. I know there's a volatility candle because that price bar is outside of the average true range. The indicator will confirm that to you. And it's bang into the 
uh, uh, the spread of that candle. But you can still use that uh, that knowledge, that that knowledge of that of that price action to your advantage. Right. I'm not actually going to be on technology because it was energy that I was uh, that I was uh, that I was focusing on. And the, the the stocks that I had was CNX have come up on this one. I think David's going to talk about COG. COG is one that, if you've been with us uh, for oh most of the summer, was one that we were looking at uh, following this long congestion. You see where it's down at sixteen dollars. Did actually fall a little bit, but it's got some nice VPA down there, and it's just been a really steady, steady, steady move. And it's also an example of patience. You have to be patient, even if you're going to day trade, you're going to have to wait for these to develop and evolve. CRVS, no, this changes every day. Uh, the other one I had here was SW. Yep, there's a really nice trap on uh, SWN, which we will have a look at in a second. In, in a second. So let me just pull that down. I'll come back to um, the market beat. So you, you take them off this, uh, the um, uh, here off, uh, off, off Finviz. You can do all sorts of checks for the individual stocks themselves. Uh, you can check out the, uh, the beta. The other thing is with beta is, is basically how um, how much more does it is it beta is the is the um, uh, whether it um, moves faster than the the actual index itself a high beta tells us that there's it moves quite a lot a low beta stock is it's not very volatile and it can be certainly on the on the faster time frames it can be very labored and and you think oh well beta is one of these metrics it's a bit of a balance uh, what you actually go for, but it's it's useful just to know CRVS. What have we got here again? CVRVS is another one where it's another kind of uh, a great great VPA, great trap move, and you can see that stops you getting into a FOMO a frame of mind, and then you can think right, okay, I'm going to fade this. I'm actually I'm not going to be I'm not going to be suckered in and I'm going to play it another way. GEVO, why did I have GEVO? Uh, that's all, also trading within a volatility candle. You can trade within a volatility candle um, because it gives you the, the, the kind of range. You almost kind of, I'm using the expression swing trading here, not from a, a, a for the perspective of time, because swing trading is really holding a position, not just intraday, but you know, it's just holding over a, a longer period. I'm more using it as from points in. So when something is in consolidation, um, and it's you know, and it's nicely ranging, you could say, well, I know that's the top side, I know that's the downside. Maybe I can, I can, you know take up a, a position within those two swing points, if you like. It's interesting, the beta on this one is 3.29. This is my SWN. Again, this is my lovely trap move. Oxy, I think I just put, I can't remember why I put that uh, there, but then I'll come back to um, 222 uh, market beat because there's something else I want to uh, draw your attention to as well for when you are looking for potential candidates and that is uh, the insider trading information that you can get from um, uh, the um, sites such as market beat right which is the one let's have a look let's just go to SWM okay Perfect, absolutely perfect. Here we are. Right, we had a wonder, this wonderful breakout. You can see here, massive candle triggers the the volatility. I'm not. I have. There are there are charts where the next candle will simply carry on, which is great, and, and it does happen. But eventually, this momentum that is built up. Uh, by the trigger of the volatility candle, and there's a lot of volume underneath it, what will happen is two, one of two things. The price will reverse into, first of all, reverse into the spread of the candle, and it will either congest or it will reverse. And on this occasion, this is a number one trap. I mean, it's a perfect trap. It goes straight into the uh, body of the candle, and you have there's a little bit more buying under here. I can I do accept that from the from the wick that we have here. The top of the candle is now 
the the level that has to be taken out and the bottom of the candle is is where this is the this is now the new range for this candle and it will and it will trade within this range until such point that it doesn't and it will either break through or it will carry on higher but the first point to make is this once this is triggered you know that it is a potential trap 90 more than 90% of the times it is a trap and you know you can you can eyeball these candles i'm not saying you know do you need a volatility uh, uh, indicator this one this is triggered in real time um we david and i would say for the sake of 57 dollars why not because it it will keep you you know it will keep you out of trouble uh, more times than you could, uh, than uh, perhaps um, you realize then then you also have the volume point of control here back at just over five dollars is this tradable this this particular stock yes it is but you know the and there was a little bit a little bit more buying under here uh, yesterday but essentially it's it, it's it's the sort of thing where it could go either way to be honest and you just have to make the decision on the time frame that you are trading so that is a i thought was a really good example of a volatility trap and the other one is let's have a look is the cnx one cnx uh, not quite not quite as dramatic but um interesting uh for two reasons first of all obviously we had the volatility this is the attempt to break away from the volume point of control really nice sort of volume profile under here and sort of steady price action nothing you know nothing scary about this particular stock it's had a it's had a, a bit of a fall then it had uh, then it hit the volume support down here at 1050 we've got some you know nice sort of buying volume coming in under the under the up candles but then it hits the volume point of control then we have a little bit more of congestion the volume point of control is that point on the chart where there is a degree of um, a balance it's some you know in market profile it's called the value area but there's no clear direction for the, uh, the particular stock but it's also uh, we have some very very strong uh, um, support and resistance this is the accumulation and distribution indicator that's available on ninja it's the it's the it's the same on trading straight station and on trading view and what happens with this indicator is the more times a level is tested as you can see here and you can see here compared with here compared with here compared with here, the more times it is tested the stronger it becomes so it gives you a visual picture of the strength of that area which is so important because uh, with a price you know where you just have a line you have no idea whether it's been tested umpteenth times and it's strong or it's just you know it, it's going to give way at the first the first uh, uh, the first attempt as it were and what this does with the volume point of control and these levels you get a channel and what the channel tells you is that this is exactly that it is in a channel now if you've got a wide range of a candle within that channel this is the daily chart and you're down on the say the the, the five minute chart we moved down to I don't know, let's move down to the five minute chart um it may be it may be worth taking a trade you say okay i know i'm in this channel uh, and it's a really you know although it could be a tight chart, there's enough in there uh, you know the candles there's going to be enough in there for me to be able to take a trade on the faster time frames but you are aware that until the price breaks the channel in some way um, it will it will keep going back into that channel now we did have we've had a break of the of the channel but this is where our volume um, uh, support and resistance comes in and then we have our camarilla levels as well which um, last the whole week now the important one is is this candle and up it went and it triggered the volatility and what happened straight back in and there was this um, um, you had this candle with this amount of volume now it's a red candle so it, it was a, a down candle but it's actually quite a positive candle because this is where we use what we call our benchmarking because you look at the range of that candle and you look at the volume underneath it and you compare it with let's have a look at this one this is almost 
the same as it were here. Look at that. But look at the volume underneath that one. You go back and you have a look at that one. Look at this one. This is quite interesting as well. That's that's that one. And you think that is some that is out of kilter. That is not. If that was all selling, then that should have been much much deeper. It's not. So in there, there must be some buying. And in fact, we've had buying under this one, and it looks like some buying is coming up, uh, coming into it as well. Now, what's even more encouraging is that it's broken. Can, this volatility took it away from the VPOC. It's also closed above this strong, that um, was resistance, now it is going to be support. So for CNX, is this, you know, the possibility that maybe um, this is not a trap, but is in, in fact, you know, time for it to move higher. It's in energy. We know it's a it's a sector that it's you know it's a, a, if inf if we have more inflation talk the energy sector is going to uh, come you know more more people they use it as people um, investors also use it as an, a hedge against inflation so possibly the portfolio they don't want to sell it because for longer term they could be in tech and they think no no I'm gonna I'm gonna you know I'm gonna keep my maybe sell some of it but they need to buy something else to hedge it and that's where um, and that's where um, something like energy, uh, you buy energy stocks or you buy the sector or you buy the ETF. Now, the reason I'm, that's it, I just want to show you something else. And if you wanted to check further on a particular stock within a sector, there's another, there's another, uh, there's another, 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 I'm going to have to find it later. There's another site I found which gives you, which actually ranks the different um, uh, uh, the different uh, stocks in that sector. So you can go and check it out against, you know, its peers, as it were. Is it at the top, or is it in the middle, or is it the bottom? But I'll find it uh, before I go. Then the other one. This is not energy. This is actually pharma, which is C R V S. And this was another one. This is for a fade, and this is really interesting. And this brings in the insider trading uh, inf information that I wanted you to uh, be aware of. Now, this is this is the perfect setup. It's long, long consolidation. You know, I can't even see the volume there because it's so distorted by this one. And it's a perfect example of um, pushing it up. Ton of tons and tons of volume underneath it. Not a big wick. Volatility, as I said, this candle did go into the spread of uh, of the uh, uh, of uh, um, this candle, but there was enough momentum to push it higher. But we have a wick to the to the top, so we think, mm, you know, there's this looks a bit suspicious. The third one comes in, but look at the volume underneath it. Massive, massive candle. And this is where traders get sucked in because you see that, even forget the volume for a minute, you see that, then you see that. Candle analysis itself will tell you, say, oh yeah, that's, you know, yeah, but you know, the buyers are still in there. This is the one, this is where they would really, really get trapped. And look at the volume under that and look at the, 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 the spread of that candle. And this is where the trap is sprung. And we are back into the spread of the candle. And look, and this is where we have got a reversal. And I can't even see the, the volume down here. It's a lot. It's a lot. But because this is so massive, um, you know, and it's down back to the volume point of control. Now, insider trading, what have we got to learn? Let's have a look. Hopefully I've got my was my Bloomberg article that I wanted to highlight to you, which is really cool. And I, if I can, this is so annoying. I did actually get all this ready. Oh, here we are. Right, this is so depressing. I mean, part of the whole principle of VPA is we know the markets are rigged from the insider uh, market maker perspective, but it's actually worse than that. Insider trading, it, it's insider trading, and this is by the executives themselves of different companies. There are very, very strict rules, very strict rules about when, when and uh, at what point um, chief execs, directors, officers of the company can buy and sell um, mainly sell their own, uh, buy and sell their own stock. As I said, there are very strict rules. But uh, this is research done by a professor at the Wh uh, Wharton School of, of Business has found that 
you know, it's they it's it's fairly rampant. It's 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 appalling actually to to be honest what happens is it doesn't happen immediately it's it's when for example he gives the examples of um um oh i don't know they have an audit or something and they know that some bad news is going to be announced in the earnings and they quietly you know divest themselves of uh, of, uh, of 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 their stock and there's a you know there's always a gap and then there's you know the news comes out and bang and away it goes. This is, if you want to read more about it, then you know, depress yourself even further. But this is where you'll find it. But there is, all is not lost because on our CRVS, there is a, on um, Market Beat, you go to Insider Trades, 6.7 million was sold at some point in, uh, in Q3. So, if you like, the chart is doing one thing, the insiders are doing something else. What does that tell you? And can I also say there's institutional ownership here? Uh, they're happily buying, <laughs> they're happily being, buying, not, you know, two million, not huge numbers, but they're buying. Institutional institutions are, are suckered in just as much as the rest of us. So please don't, you know, just because the, there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of sites out there saying, oh, well, the institutions have, have gone into this stock. It must be a good one. Uh, well, no, not really. Institutions have to buy. They have got barrel loads of money that, that you know, hit their accounts every, every, every day for pensions, for, for for funds, etc. They have to park that money somewhere. And you as a trader, when you know your your account is growing nicely, I hope, you've got to find a home for that money. And you know, you will be then an investor and you, you know, you have to put your investor hat on. So institutional owners, institutional ownership, funds and what have you, they have exactly the same problem as everyone. This is the this is the metric that you really want to see. This is the metric you want to see, and then suddenly, because what you can, you look at the precise date that it was that it was sold. Was the price going up at the same time? We did a post about Walmart actually, and uh, that was I think they half a billion of stock, and you know the the price sort of you know, hasn't been doing uh, that well since then. So that's another metric, and finally, Givo. There we are. Uh, right. GVE, and I'm going to pass over to David. If you've got any questions on anything I'm saying, please just put them into the chat box. Let's have a look. Pardon? What's that mean? Um, Sorry, I don't, I don't quite understand the question. I'm being a bit dim. Can you? Um, yeah. Right now, Jivo is very interesting. This is actually a basic materials, and the, the the what caught my eye first of all, it's got a very nice beta. Um, is this candle here with this ton of volume underneath it? And when we actually look at it on Ninja Trader, this is what I'm saying about uh, trading within. The spread of the candle if you are down on the uh, on the on, on the um, faster time frame it's a really nice example a bit spotty a bit messy but this is what I mean this is this is where all that volume came in under here massive massive volume away from the volume point of control again notice it's in a channel in a channel again and this time it was just bang straight into the spread of the candle down it went and it's kind of it's kind of going sideways at the moment and this is where this is not going to do anything until it either takes the high of this volatility candle out or the low and in fact it looks like possibly um, it's broken through this uh, this resistance which then became support as we can see here uh, it's broken through there it's down on the s3 that might give it some support today so that could uh, that could act in a in in a positive way the third levels of our Camarilla are really, really important. They are, they're based, you know, people say, well, I can calculate the Camarilla myself. Yes, you can. But we've actually added a few little bits and pieces in there from, um, there's a bit of Fibonacci in there. There's a bit of, there's all sorts of, you know, there's a little bit of, uh, you know, we sprinkled it with a few other bits and pieces in there. And the S3 
and certainly the S4, the third levels and the, uh, the third and the fourth levels are so powerful for uh, support, for reversals, and for, you know, price will congest around them. So it's it's hit it today. There's buying uh, uh, coming in. But overall, you have to bear in mind you are trading within this candle. Um, so it is not a, you know, whilst you can take trades on a faster time frame, you have to be aware of the uh, the additional um, um, the requirements, if you like, of, as I said, trading within such a, a huge uh, a volatility candle. Right. Sorry, do, do we clarify what the... Um, yeah, yeah, don't worry. Don't we've done all that. Right. I'm going to stop there. I'm going to pass you to David, if that's okay. Let's have a look. Uh, let me just finally one other point I just want to make. Yes, I did it. I bought it up this morning. Um, I moved over to my um, for my for the forex web, and I usually use I usually was using one of my demo accounts, but this is actually my live account of my MT4 platform. I haven't looked at it for some times in in terms of what it offers, and it's absolutely brilliant. This is actually from Think Markets, and I actually have I have the VIX, which is hugely important if you are trading anything because you we were talking about sentiment this is the barometer for market sentiment and it has the dollar index which is great where's it gone where's it gone there we are that's uh the, where's the my dollar index gone here here it is yeah there's the dollar has been on an absolute surge and part of the reason for the surge of the dollar has been the rise in bond yields talking about inflation again um, you know, the dollar is still, it's also a safe, it's still, you know, the, say the ultimate, and people say gold is the ultimate safe haven, but in currencies, the dollar is still the ultimate uh, uh, safe haven, but it's had an absolute, uh, it's been on, on a real tear uh, the last few days. And also what I mentioned this morning with the dollar, I may not have mentioned it in these sessions, and that is, um, it tends to do quite well when there's a democratic administration. It tends to strengthen at, uh, you know, during, uh, as I said, when, when there's a Democrat as a president. Um, bond yields are rising. You'll find the dollar rising, people moving into uh, treasuries. And also, what's also happening is the Fed is, you know, talking the talk about tapering and, and raising interest rates, becoming more hawkish. And you will get what's called the spread between different bonds. So, for example, in Europe, the Bund, which is the German bond, it's a very safe, considered a very safe uh, investment, but it pays. It's negative. So, if you if you have a widening spread, people people will go where the money is. And if the money is in, uh, you know, you get a better yield on a, on a treasury, you will go into treasuries. But the treasuries then will tell you they also feed into another narrative. Right. That's what I've got to say. Um, I haven't quite finished on uh, stop selection. I know it seems like we've been covering this on lots of different uh, different sessions, but there is so much that you have to kind of get your head around, um, you know, when you are looking at stocks. Um, and there's always something new that I think that you can, you know, you can factor in to your decision making. I mean, I read somewhere, you know, sometimes day traders, they just like to go with the crowd and by, by all means do so. Go and look at the stocks that are being, uh, you know, what are the stocks that are being talked about on some of the, uh, on some of uh, Reddit and Wall Street bets. Great, fine. But you have to remember the lessons, you know, the, the things I've highlighted on these stocks apply equally as well on, uh, uh, they apply to all stocks. Anyway, that's just to give you some more food for thought. And uh, next time, as I said, I will take the, uh, the, the narrative on from there. Hi everyone. Hope you can uh, hope you can see my charts. Just looking around, Anna. Yeah, Anna's just going to make sure she can hear me loud and clear. Brilliant. Okay, let's just have a quick whiz round, see what's going on. 
uh, getting tight for time, so I'm not going to run too far over time. We were way over this morning. Uh, very quickly on uh, the three indices, YM, NQ, and ES. Um, basically, this is, five, this is on the daily, this is on the five minute. I mean, they are all extremely fragile at the moment. Uh, this is the YM. You can see we're actually down uh, overall. The NQ is struggling to rally and the ES is down on the day so far. So it's a little bit mixed, but essentially it's looking very, very fragile, the whole thing. Uh, you only have to skim up onto the five minute chart. That's the uh, five minute for the YM. I'll go over onto the multiple charts because it's easier to look at there. I've got the YM set up. But essentially, this is incredibly fragile at the moment. Um, risk on sentiment is 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 weakening all the time. Sorry, that's the one we're on. Let's just hop over onto the multiples. Here we are. I've got the YM here. Solid move on, on the YM. Um, solid move lower. Let's just uh, pick up some of the... This is on the one minute. It's not it's not rampaging lower, but it's it's good enough to trade. Certainly tradable up onto the 10 minute volatility candle at the open. It's what you normally expect to see: a lot of volatility breaking down, breaking away from the volume point of control. Look at the speed it moves through. Low volume node here. You know the market just goes through there like a knife through hot butter, or a hot no, a knife through butter. It's just very very quick, very savage. That's what you expect to see. Supported with good volume, and the trend monitors bright red on there as well which is what we want to see right the way through. Pretty much uh, universal right the way through. Red, 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 red. Just hop onto the five minutes, have a quick look there. <clears throat> Again, um, you know, at the open, we've got the surge in volume, lots of volatility. You've got to wait for the market to pause, uh, congest, get under into some sort of momentum before you actually jump in, because if you're going to jump in here, you're going to get cut to ribbons. Uh, and it's just a question of waiting for the market to settle. I'm looking over the right-hand side of the screen, just seeing what's going on. Just pull this over very quickly. This is on trading view. Got the four indices up here. Uh, basically, this is uh, top left is pound, so we'll ignore that for the time being. This is the one that's important. Obviously, the yen is rocketing up. That's going to drive, really drive the indices. If that's going to continue, that this is on five minute. Bear in mind, so this is pretty quick. Down at the bottom here, we've got the dollar. Might well see that starting to kick up, and that's the euro, which has been selling off pretty strongly all day. But this is what you want to see. And in addition to that, we've got the VIX here. That's starting to climb now. It's been drifting upwards uh, around the 2022s, through 22 now, up to 22.55. So you know you have to have the VIX up, and that's the place to find it. If you don't have it on the platform, if you don't have it with your broker, then you know, go and uh, watch it on uh, on investing.com. It's absolutely fine. That's the chart there. I've just showed you there. Um, if you don't have, if you're not subscribed to the VIX, um, but this is what's going on at the moment. You know, it's all very fragile, and that's why we're seeing what we're seeing now. A bit of momentum coming into the market, downside momentum driving, you know, risk sentiment even harder down to the downside. It's not looking great. In terms of other markets, let's just have a whiz around. Really nice move on gold. Nice to see gold um, moving higher. Not that I'm a gold bug. Um, there are plenty of people out there who are, and that's their sole belief, is that gold should always be rising, um, purely based on the fact that it's a precious metal, that it's in limited supply, et cetera, et cetera. Well, that's all well and good, but unfortunately, it doesn't particularly follow that um, mantra. Uh, much as many of us would like it to, as I say, I'm not a gold bug, so I just trade it on both sides of the market. But it's a nice update today, very solid update today. And if anything is going to occur in terms of inflation, then technically speaking, gold should be a major beneficiary. It's not a given, but if inflation is on the horizon, and let's face it, it's everywhere you look now. You, you can take any particular sector of the market, any particular from your own perspective, you'll see just household, uh, the, the weekly food bill will be going up, just, just everything is rising. Um, we have uh, various other factors here in the UK, which are also in, uh, um, affecting that. But globally, everything is rising. You see in commodity prices, uh, you see it in energy prices, you see in all sorts of different ways. And with inflation on the horizon, then, you know, one of the main beneficiaries should be gold. It's been it's been moving up, but it's it's hit this level at around. Let's just get that out of the way. It cannot get through this this 1840. You can see it here. 
very strong level here on the on the daily chart of 1840 per ounce and it just cannot get through that level if it does manage to claw, it, claw its way back first place it's got to get to is the volume point of control which is just over 1800 dollars an ounce i've got 18 1808 i think from memory um, it's got to claw its way back here and then it's got to claw through this all this volume here remember volume is the same as priced base support and resistance volume acts in exactly the same way so when as i showed you on i can't remember which chart it was i was showing you where the price has gone through i think it was on the ym on a, on a five or ten minute when it gets to these low volume areas you can expect the price to move through there pretty quickly why because there's very little in the way of volume to actually act as resistance when it's coming up through here it's it's moving into this huge area of volume around the volume point of control which is why the market will congest there anyway um, but that's what causes the market to pause these levels here these dash levels are actually levels of priced base support and resistance which we're all familiar with the accumulation distribution indicator on ninja trader presents these as thicker levels so the greater a number a level has been tested and held then the thicker the line this is relatively uh, less strong these are much stronger because they are thicker in density in width and so as the price action comes up to reach these first of all it's got to hit it's got to move through this price base level and then it has to fight its way through yet another price base level and then it's into the depth of the volume here and then out the other side and that's why this it, this level here 1840 is so important you can see how often it's been tested already very important if it does manage to get through there then all things being equal you should see gold really soar up towards 1900 dollars per ounce and beyond up to 1920 probably up to this old top here so it's nice to see it on an up day as always volume is important we want to see what this volume is going to be like is it in agreement is it in disagreement once it closes out on the day but it, it's a nice inter interday uh, day trading opportunity nothing particularly scary about the move no great reactions lower just pull up the 10 minute here we saw this little rally here came into a little bit of weakness here a little bit of weakness but the buyers step in again volume falls away and on up we go injection of volume in on this one and on up higher volumes fallen away on these last two candles here you can see obviously we've got volume falling away generically across that time piece um, but in terms of this volume and this volume it is falling away the, that candle Anna was talking about benchmark candles you can actually overlay that one on that one and all things being equal you would expect the volume here to be up here and not down here so there is some certain weakness coming into this move already that's not to say it's not going to roll over but nevertheless it's a it's a little nuanced warning sign that perhaps this this very strong rally that we see in which let's face it this is since two o'clock our time so in the space of what two hours we've seen it go from 32 to 58 so you know it's a substantial move and perhaps this is now reaching a little bit of an exhaustion point also confirmed by the fact we've got a little doji candle there as well it's not to say you close out it's just saying hang on a minute you know this might start to be looking a little bit weak in terms of if you were going to jump into that particular rally at that particular point and got in lower down the spectrum of price <clears throat> another another market that's been moving very nicely is copper that's had a nice down day really nice chart flick over onto the 10 minute here uh, just click that off sorry about that get rid of that trend monitor you know really helping to keep you in this is another breakaway trade looked at a couple of breakaway trades this morning in the forex market um, and again it's it's a question of where you get in um, what is your parameter this is a very what was up here would have been a very strong level this blue dash line on the accumulation distribution at this point over here obviously it's going to act as support as the price comes down to meet it once you've breached it it then becomes resistance very solid resistance for you where you get in down here you know that's that's your choice the candles i'm always looking for i highlight these all the time is where you get candles like this in a down in a down uh, rally and a down move lower you're looking for uh, weakness you're looking for a market that's trying to rally into weakness decent volume under the candle and you know that is a potential opportunity to, to actually get back into the trade 
Doji candle down here. Then we get another one, another sign of weakness. You know, trying to rally. Market's trying to rally. It's not going anywhere. Another doji. Then we get a volatility trigger, volatility candle. Ton of volume coming in. So we know it's a genuine volatility move. We know the big operators are in here. What do we expect? Congestion for two reasons. First of all, we've got a volatility trigger. Secondly, we're down at the volume point of control. Now what we're waiting for is a move lower. So we're on the 10 minute. If we want to find out what's going on, then we've got to go up to a, another time frame. This is the daily, but you could flick this over onto, the, say, the 15, see where the 15 is. <clears throat> Still no, uh, no depth to it, so we've got to go up to 30. There we are. Just refresh that. There we go. And even that is down at the extreme on the volume point of control. So we just keep going and you just do it in that way. You are looking for uh, the next level where that trade is going to potentially take you to where the volume point of control is is wider and you have depth to the volume profile. So you can see what's going on in terms of where that price action is like to move to next. Let's just go back to our indices and see what that was copper, that was gold. Up onto oil, let's see what's going on in terms of oil. Very bullish on oil, we've written about it extensively. Really nice quick rally here, just arrived. Uh, where are we? Uh, Thursday, oil inventory was yesterday. Um, you know, this is a quick rally coming in here. We've got a volatility trigger on one. But as I said this morning, the volatility, if you get a volatility trigger on one, it is not as significant as if you get a volatility trigger on five or 10 or 15 or 30. The slower the time frame, the more significance it will carry. But a pretty solid move. To see if we get any volatility triggers on any of the other time frames, then you're down looking at slower time frames. This is 15. What have we got on 15 for this move? We're coming up to a very strong level of resistance here, potentially another one here. Look at the speed it moves through this low volume area here. Now we are coming up to the volume at this level here. We've got two levels of priced base resistance coming into play and a big slug of volume which is coming into play as well. So expect this particular move to slow down. It's not going to go through here in a hurry. And if you're jumping in late into this move, that's why it's going to slow down. We've got the volatility on one now. So that's confirmed what went on on 15 second. Ton of volume coming in is what we expect to see. Expect to see congestion or a reversal. If it carries on higher, fine. As I said this morning, if you've jumped in here as someone you've made money, close out, sit on your hands for a couple of minutes, just wait and see what happens. If it congests and reverses, you're happy. If it carries on higher, so what? You just jump in, all you've lost out is a few points on the, on the dollar. It's as simple as that. And, I, and I've said that thousands and thousands of times. I say every time we get a volatility trigger. We've now got volatility trigger on five, so that's adding even more strength to that particular argument. It's hit resistance here. You've got resistance, resistance here too. Ton of volume, as you expect to see. If you see high volume with a volatility, it just confirms that the big operators and the market makers are actually playing in that particular move. In other words, they are participating. We just wait and see. If this does continue higher, fine. Happy days. You can jump back in again. If not, you've lost nothing. All you've lost is uh, a little bit of profit in here. It's as simple as that. This looks as though it's going to carry on higher. Fine. No worries. If you want to jump back in, no problem. Let's go back up to 15. There we go. It's got through there. It looks as though it's going to blast through there. And if it holds above there, then we've got low volume nodes falling all the way through here. Should move up to 7540 without too much effort. It's not going to take so much effort to get through there as it has to get through the rest of it. Nice move there. Just go back finally, just to wrap up on the YM, see where we are here. Flattening off a little bit. It's, uh, but it is all very, very weak and fragile. Just go back onto the dailies. There we go. That's where we are. Okay, I'm going to wrap up there because uh, we've run over time. Uh, thank you very much indeed for coming along today. Hope you've enjoyed it. And um, we will be back uh, ASAP with um, lots more webinars. Not sure we'll be back next week, certainly the week after. If you have any questions, you can always get hold of us, uh, Anna at AnnaCooling.com or David at QuantumTrading.com.
Let me just show you where all the various bits and pieces are before I do wrap up. Just move that up the way. I'll come back to you, Joe, in a moment. Uh, this is where you find all the indicators over at quantumtrading.com. MT45s, Ninja Trader 7.8, Trading View, and Trade Station. Remember, Trade Station, we have two versions. We've got the one which is run, I've actually got it down here. This is on, um, this is powered by Interactive Brokers. So if you have an Interactive Brokers account, it's a great way to trade through the platform because you can click on to uh, Trade Station. You have all the advantages of the Trade Station platform, and you have uh, the power of uh, the deep discount brokerage, which is uh, I, the IB account, which is a fantastic broker. Uh, deep discount. Uh, we've been with them for many years. That's not a recommendation. It's just stating the fact uh, that we have accounts with them. But if you have one, you can hook it up in this way. And then you have the power of uh, radar panel over here. I've got currency futures running over here. I've got the 6A, the 6B, the 6C, 6C, 6N, and down at the bottom here, uh, these, the uh, Swiss franc. And over on the other side, oops, get rid of that. I've got the NQ here running. And I've also got a time and sales window running through here, so I can actually see all the contracts that are running through. 93 gone through there. I'm looking for big numbers here. I'm looking for the market reaction. You know, how does the market react to these big numbers? I'm not interested in the ones and twos and tens. They're just noise level. What I am interested in is those big numbers. Anything uh, over 50, 50, 100, 150, those big blocks that are going through in one. Uh, those are the ones I'm, I'm really eyeballing and I want to see how the price action reacts to it and uh, it gives you a heads up as to the how that order has been accepted and absorbed into the market and the reaction in terms of price that it has had. Um, I'm not going to go into that now, but it's uh, it's another facet of trading which is equally important. Um, so that's on TradeStation 9.5 and we also have TradeStation version 10 which is run with the traditional TradeStation Securities data feed. Wonderful platform. If you are a customer of, of Quantum and you've bought indicators in the past, you may have one or two. I always say this, we will upgrade you. Uh, you get a full credit for whatever you spent. If you want to upgrade to something else, if you want to upgrade to a full package or, or the education program, whatever it may be, you always get a full credit with us. And if you buy into the, a full package, on any platform, you get all the indicators free of charge. And people who've been with us for donkey's years have actually benefited from that hugely. They have all the new indicators. For example, on TradingView, we've just added two more indicators. There's the radar panel and also the quant the um, cryptocurrency uh, strength indicator as well. Uh, so if you had the full package of TradingView, uh, which you probably bought at a discounted price anyway, because we didn't have all the indicators at the time, you've also got all those plus the new ones. And that applies to everything else. We're working on Ninja Trader now. We're working on Market Analyzer. We will be adding all our indicators into Market Analyzer. So if you have the full package on Ninja Trader, you'll get all those automatically free of charge. And indeed, we're going to add some new indicators too. So you'll get those in due course. That's at quantumtrading.com. This is where you'll find Anna, anacooling.com, all the books up on Amazon, Kindle, and in paperback as well, and all the links to all the various sites. And finally, on the education program, I know we've got some of our Forex students on the program. Um, this is where you'll find the education program for Forex. It's called the Complete Forex Trading Program because that's what it is. And last year, we bolted on the funded program where you trade our money basically up to $2 million. No risk to you. There is a cost of entry. It's an entry ticket, if you like, to the evaluation program where you trade our money, live money. It's not a demo account. You trade our live money. Uh, you start with a five, ten, or fifteen thousand dollar account, and once you've passed a particular profit target we set, which is very achievable, um, then we increase that those uh, funds accordingly, and you get to trade with those the levels five, ten, and fifteen thousand. You decide, and then from there on, we multiply it by four. So if you start with fifteen thousand, that goes up to sixty thousand. And thereafter, it doubles, so it goes 61, 22, 40, all the way up to $2 million. It's our money, not yours. So you risk nothing other than the cost of entry. That's it. That's your maximum risk exposure. You trade Forex to start with, and then on the portfolio manager levels, which is the next level up, we add in the indices, European and US indices, and also gold as well. So there we go. I think that's covered everything. Um, 
still not sure I understand your question, uh, Joa. If you want to drop me a personal email, just drop me david at quantumtrading.com and I'll happily answer it there for you. So thanks very much indeed for joining us today. Hope you've enjoyed it and we will be back ASAP. Enjoy the rest of the trading session. Enjoy the rest of the trading week. Have a great weekend and we will see you soon and bye for now.